This is video number four in a restoring a Buick E49. As you can see, the headlights and radiator are back in. That's not the original radiator. I took the, the original radiator in and they told me it leaked, so I put one of my other radiators on. It's actually much better. It's, it doesn't leak at all. The Buick insignia has fewer rock dings in it. No grill, so the radiator gets hit by rocks. Well, we learned the water pump shaft is not seized. So it has to be one of the other two things. Either the valves are seized or the pistons inside. So we're, gonna, we're gonna isolate the pistons by taking all the valves apart. The way to take the valves apart, normally what you do is you compress the springs, lift the rocker shaft and pull out the push, the push rod. But this engine is seized so you can't turn the engine over to get each cylinder in the right position to compress the spring. And you can't take it out from the bottom because down by if they took those uh, lifters off, well, half of these piston, half of these push rods are are under compression. You can't lift them up if they're already under compression. So I got to get them out from the top. I got to take the rocker arms off. Look at those little rocker shafts. One, two, three, four, five, six little tiny three-inch rocker shafts. Pretty funny. Those bolts are hard to get to. You can't get a socket set on them, so I'm gonna be doing them one little turn at a time with a with a side with a open end wrench. But that's what I gotta do. I gotta take the rocker arms off, then pull the push rods out, and take those out. So you can see the bottom, there's roller, the lifters, there's rollers on the end of each push rod. And make sure the rollers are in good shape. As you can see, I put a new hose on there. Use the, I use the old the old uh, hose clamps. Those are the hose clamps 100 years old. They still work. Okay, tearing it down a little. After I took this hose off, this is the return hose on the antifreeze. Look at the rust down in that hole. And that one over there, too. Mountains of rust in there. I'm going to go after that with a shop back so that none of it falls down back into the water jacket. Anyway, I've taken off one set of rocker arms. And when that comes off, you can take the push rods out. You see the push rods are used to be here. Those are the lifters. They lift. Cam's camshaft is underneath there. I'm not going to take that out now. I'm not going to take the valves out now. I'm just going to take all the. I'm taking all the push rods off because if I take all the push rods off and the engine is still seized, then we know it's not the valves. So that's all I'm going to do is take out all the push rods and I'm going to go after that rust with a shot bag. Talk to you later. These are the push rods, by the way. The top has a ball bearing on it to fit into the rocker. The bottom just fits into the lifter. The bottom of the lifter has rollers on it. That's, that's another project in the future. Isn't that something? All right, all the push rods are out. Eliminating the valves as a chant as the reason for the car being stuck. I'm going to turn it over now and see if it's uh, still stuck. First, first before I do anything, I got to take the see all that rust that's built up in the ports that's where the, the the coolant goes out into the upper radiator hose full of rust see that Powerful vacuum cleaner. And same thing over there. 
Well, I got all the rust out of that. And out of that. So what I'm going to do now is to try and see if I unseized it by taking all the valve the apparatus apart. Here's the spot. Cranking it. Those are the 12 push rods and the 6 rocker shafts in order. It did not get unstuck. So what I'm going to do, I took out the spark plugs. I'm going to put in a 50-50 mix of acetone and power steering fluid. And it's going to unstick them. Oh, there's another spark plug here. See that? You put a couple ounces. I'll mix up about 12 ounces of mix. Put two ounces in each cylinder, maybe three. All right. 10 ounces of hydraulic fluid. Power steering fluid, ATF, whatever you want to call it. Tractor fluid. Mixed with 10 ounces of acetone. Whenever you're dealing with acetone, you have to use glass or metal containers. You can't use plastic. You can use nylon. Acetone dissolves most kinds of plastic. It does not dissolve nylon. The way this works is the acetone dissolves all the 50-50 mix acetone and hydraulic fluid. The way this works is the acetone dissolves the resins that might build up and cause it to be stuck. This thing holds about two ounces. I'm going to put four ounces in each cylinder. It might arm in the way probably. Uh, well, you don't need to see. There's two ladles in there. You gotta use a metal funnel because acetone dissolves plastic. It's about two ounces in this, in this. Oh, good. I'm spilling it all over the place. That's wonderful. The way it works is the acetone dissolves the resins and then the hydraulic fluid goes into the space that the acetone dissolved and keeps it dissolved, keeps it out of it, keeps it from reforming. If I just use plain acetone, it'll dissolve it and then an hour later, acetone evaporates and you got nothing. Okay, all six cylinders, about four ounces, maybe five ounces. You don't want to make it too much. You don't want to put too much liquid in there because if you try to crank it and there's too much liquid in each cylinder then you get some kind of hydrolock which is going to prevent the thing from turning over. So I'm just going to wait and then come to the next part of this operation. Put the spark plugs back in so the acetone doesn't explode inside of there. I got the starter crank there and I'm going to put about 300 pounds of pressure on it. Not too much, I don't want to break anything. I'm just going to let that sit. Keep in mind, I got the top of this wood to this, right about that nut there. I got a lot of pressure on that starter crank. I'm just going to let that pressure sit until the acetone decides it's going to dissolve whatever it's going to dissolve. 